So good afternoon. Um, I'm going to put in the modified idle speed air valve, which is this here. This is the one I had in the video. I put my connectors on here and I put the rubber hose. I got a new piece of this uh, plastic connector. They sent me uh, six feet of this stuff. I will send you a piece made to the correct length, which is 42 millimeters, one and five eighths inches um, for this for $3. And I'm going to put my cash app in the uh, uh, description of the video so you can send that to me. Please put your address in there. This way you don't have to buy a whole spool and you will get them in the correct um, you know, setting if you want two, send six. If you want three, send nine dollars, and uh, we can do it that way. Now, this is the other aftermarket unit I had, and we had this adjusted. And you can see on this one, I hadn't adjusted it all the way out, it is a little bit further in, so that means this will take a little bit more than one amp to fully close. And this has been working so far pretty good now. Pierre, I think John Pierre is his name, or Jean Pierre, has made a video for Motor and Zimmer in Germany and they redid an engine, a 5 6 liter, uh, which was probably in the same shape as mine, with 200,000 kilometers on it, which is probably, I would say, 125, 130,000 miles. And they had similar problems where it idled a little bit rough at times, where you could hear, click the, uh, hear the valves clicking. And what they winded up doing is replacing the camshafts on both sides and they redid the uh, valve seats and put new valves in, basically a, ha a, a head job. And then they adjusted the lifter clearances, corrected the hydraulic lifters. So let me put this unit here in and then we're going to see how this actually starts with the, with the way my engine is at this point. So it went in. Now comes the real tricky part, this here, to get this back on, with just one hand. You want to put this plastic piece in here while it is out. Uh, let me see, this is going to be tricky. I have to put the phone down for a second to get that nut on here without having that jump up on me, just a second. Let me see, oops, sorry about this. There you go, you can look at the dryer, receiver dryer from the air conditioner. Uh, all right. Uh, okay, so we have this now in here. I got, you see, I got all my cables redone. And I have to redo my wiring harness here a little bit. This is getting all brittle. And then I still need to fix, this is the EGR uh, temperature pulp. And this is an American plug. This was retrofitted in California for California versions. The federal versions don't have this. And what I did is I put a, a uh, resistor in here, a 51 kilo ohm. This usually plugs in here. And this is a non Mercedes Benz part. Um, this thing should have, I think, 50 kilo ohms when the exhaust temperature is now, I got to think about 180 degrees or 220 degrees Fahrenheit, somewhere in there. If someone has a functioning EGR temperature sensor or knows which model this is or which car manufacturer, American car manufacturer, Japanese car manufacturer, use these plugs, please leave a comment in there. I need to replace this because now my temperature feedback is not correct at this point. So that's about the last item I needed to check. And here you can see I have adjusted this plate now exactly down from the top down exactly where that needs to be. And you can see here, this is how far I had to push this in uh, when I drove it in. It was just a little bit off. And, um, but I, I've perfectly aligned it the way it is supposed to be. These things at 300,000 miles, every time you stop the engine, every time you turn the engine off, this plate comes up from the counterweight, it pushes itself down, and that will tap this little pin up. 
just a little bit at the time. And again on the 560, this one here is the screw which screws this plate onto the bottom side of this here. That's why you have to adjust this here. And on the 3.8 liter and on the 5 liter, this adjustment is right underneath here. Just remember this. If you have a 5.6 or 4.2, do not try to tap on this. It won't go anywhere. It's a screw. All right, let's see if we can turn this thing on and what this actually looks like. It, And then we know if the one amp setting is too low, for my car or if it is just right we will see this now the car hasn't been started in two days so we're right there where we're supposed to be at and that's it so you can set it to where i had it before a little bit below i would say it's a half a millimeter below millimeter or so so it might be 1.1 1.2 amps or you can leave it at this position where we adjusted it yesterday or two days ago in the other video when we had this at uh, uh, basically at uh, uh, one amp closing fully closed and this should assure that the idle speed doesn't go up when the engine is warming up and this warming up with the older engines that the idle going up comes simply from the valves the valves won't close as much as they do uh, when they're cold, when they're worn out, when they don't seat right. You know, it is just a wear and tear on this stuff. And uh, you have to keep that in mind too. But this fix with pulling the, uh, uh, releasing the spring tension in the idle speed air valve will help you through until you actually have enough time or money or both or the willingness and time to actually overhaul your head job, mostly the valves and camshafts and the timing chain that the timing is correctly. And then that, uh, you know, unstable rough idle is gonna disappear too. Of course, that all depends on where your, um, you know, uh, system is in general health with the pistons and all of that stuff. Well, anyway, um, that was just an hour I replaced it and it is doing what it is supposed to be doing so we can do another start here let's see yeah that's the normal normal thing and then it will go and then it will adjust itself into the whole thing here and then we're going to be good to go the the idle speed right now is because we got what about 39 degrees while i'm doing this so it's a little bit above freezing probably four or five degrees celsius will probably be a little bit higher and then it's going to drop down a little bit once the engine warms up and there's a range in it so but this is about the range you want to be in say like anywhere between 600 to 850 800 in that range on a carb with that mileage and ha not having done the uh the valves and uh, everything else like i said that's going to come anyway in the winter when I'm going to do the adjustment for the timing by two to three degrees, you can see now the engine is slowing down a little bit more. This is how slow this actually goes. It takes about 45 minutes, uh, 45 seconds. It can take 90 seconds at a higher RPM when it is really cold. And that is all coming from your temperature sensor B11 too, uh, into the ECU. And from there is a zero to a three to five volt output. Uh, going to the fuel pump relay and to the idle speed control unit um, and then we will see what compression we have when I'm going to get to this and we will see how well the valves close the valve test valve leakage test is supposed to be done with a warm to hot engine and that's really difficult because you have to screw in that hose into the cylinder and everything is hot and that's not a really neat thing to do because like i said these engines will leak more uh, the valves will leak more when the engine is warm um, compared to when the engine actually is cold and uh, that's where the idle speed issues a lot of those come that is all this stuff if your idle goes around a thousand eleven hundred if it goes way higher than this then you have a completely different problem but like i said it's the first thing you have to fix is all your vacuum leaks and with that you have a great afternoon